Hi, my name is Alan Prost, and what I'm going to do for you today is I'm going to demonstrate the mode of pressure support. And specifically what we're going to look at is what happens when we alter the e-sensitivity in pressure support. All right, so come on in a little closer, and I'm going to demonstrate this for you. Now a couple things to keep in mind is that as I move the test lung here, as I lift up on this, I'm actually pretending to be the patient. So this is inspiratory effort. All right? So the patient's not making any spontaneous inspiratory efforts at this time. And when I pull up like this, this mimics the work of breathing of the patient. All right? So what I have set up for you right now is just the mode of pressure support. All right? So if you look carefully, you can see our settings here. Um, I've got a pressure support of zero set up. So that gives me a PEEP level of 5, or CPAP level of 5. I got my flow sensitivity set at 3, and my E sensitivity set at 25%, all right? FiO2 just 21%. So if we look here closely, get you in as close as I can here, all right? As the patient is spontaneously breathing, as I'm triggering that spontaneous breath, we can see our inspiratory flows just right here, all right? So inspiration, exhalation. There's a really long, prolonged inspiration. All right. Here's a little short inspiratory effort. All right. And here's a really long inspiration. Okay. So you notice up here on the pressure diagram, di um, waveform, inspiration causes a little bit of a change initially in the pressure being delivered to the patient, and then the pressure builds up a little bit as we exhale. So the ventilator is trying to maintain a constant pressure of plus 5 in the circuit, or a CPAP pressure. All right? So I'm going to move you back here a little bit, just so you can see me mimicking the spontaneous breathing of the patient. All right? So this is the patient breathing spontaneously here. All right? So just out of the corner of your eye, I hope you can see that spontaneous inspiratory effort there. So that's a breath in. So what I'm going to try to show for you right now is when I change from just the CPAP level here, where there's no real changes in our pressures, I'm going to increase the pressure support level here to plus 10. All right? Now as soon as I do that, you can see during inspiration, the pressure in the circuit jumps up to that plus 10 centimeters of water pressure. Okay? And so I've got my inspiratory flow, and then as soon as the patient starts to exhale a little bit, or to 25% of my peak inspiratory flow, all right, the ventilator goes into exhalation and allows my patient to exhale. So if the patient takes a big, long, deep breath in, as soon as they start to exhale and their flow rate starts to drop, the ventilator cycles into exhalation. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you that at different levels of pressure support, we augment or change the work of breathing of our patient. So if I increase the level of pressure support, the work of breathing of my patient is very minimal. So with very little effort lifting up on the test lung, I can, my patient can move a lot of air. If I decrease my pressure support level to say zero, all right, so now it's just CPAP, I have to use a lot more force or do a lot more work to breathe in and out. And that's true of my patient. So I'm going to set my pressure support back up to 10 here, kind of a moderate level of pressure support. So now the work of breathing for my patient is really decreased, all right? And I'm going to show you what happens when I change the E sensitivity. So if I increase the E sensitivity to, say, 80%, all right, which is the maximum here, what happens as soon as my inspiratory flow rate declines from 100% to 80% of the inspiratory flow, the ventilator cycles off, all right? So it cycles very quickly. As soon as the patient starts to exhale at all, the ventilator goes into exhalation. So this really can make it very quick for your ventilator to cycle from the inspiratory phase to the expiratory phase, all right? When I change the E sensitivity to be very low, to 1%, all right? You'll notice I have this long, deep, prolonged inspiration here where the inspiratory flow has to go from 100%, which is about 50 liters per minute, down to almost zero before the ventilator will cycle into exhalation. All right. So I'm going to try to capture that 
on a close-up for you so you can see that really clearly here. All right? So this is the inspiratory flow declining to 1% of my peak flow before it goes into exhalation. And when I crank that right up to 80%, and I'm breathing in now, you can see that as soon as the inspiratory flow starts to decline at all, very to 20% of its maximum, or to 80% of the flow rate, it goes into exhalation. All right? So if I take a long, deep breath like this, all right? So here's my patient, take a big breath in, and it very quickly cycles from inspiration to exhalation. Now the default on this ventilator is 25%. So what that means is my inspiratory flow has to decline to 25% of the peak flow of my patient. So as the patient breathes in, the inspiratory flow, right now it's going to about 25, 50 liters per minute for my peak inspiratory flow. So once it declines to 25% of that, so about 10 liters per minute, it's going to go into exhalation. All right? So now, many people have a lot of opinions about how to set up that expiratory sensitivity. I myself, I'm not sure the best way to set that up. Um, leaving it at the default until you can see your patient breathing on pressure support might be the best way to approach that. Then if they feel like they're really air hungry or they can't exhale easily, you may increase that E sensitivity to say 80%. If they're relaxed or they have very weak inspiratory efforts, you might decrease it to say 15 or 10 percent. And that prolonged exchange from inspiration to exhalation may give them more augmentation of their own inspiratory efforts. A lot of people will tell you that they adjust it to um, patient comfort. All right? I'm not sure what that looks like, but maybe you can tell me after you've seen it on your patients at the bedside. So this is Alan Prost. Thank you very much talking about e-sensitivity and pressure support.